G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of this draft series I'm doing up until the draft where I do a short five or six minute video on individual draft prospects so you can get a better feel for them as players. I'm gonna to endeavor to do this every day until the draft, which is on November 20th. And if you wanna see the other videos I've done in this series, you can click up in the top right corner of this video. It's got a playlist with all the players I've done so far. Members will have early access to these videos. And on that note, I do wanna give a special shout out to two recent members of the YouTube channel, JRD and C Jones for and on board. Thank you so much. So today we're talking about Alexander Toru, who might be one of the most exciting and potentially divisive players in this year's talent pool and a real unicorn when compared to some of the other top prospects. He's 193 centimeter high flying intercepting defender from Vic Country and uh, I suppose an unusual top prospect where you don't really see 193 centimeters which is somewhat undersized in the modern game for a tall defender to be going that early in drafts. But that just speaks to his upside, his talent and there's also reason to believe that he could genuinely improve as well because he's been hampered by injury a lot over the last couple of years. I believe he missed a lot of the 2023 campaign and he also missed an early part of the season with a hip injury this year. So he went from not having much of a profile in terms of draft circles at the start of this year to now being considered a potential top two selection. He had a really strong finish at the Coates Talent League and had one particular game where in the qualifying final, he swung forward, took a couple of great grabs, kicked two goals too. So at his best, the best version of Alex Toru is when he's playing in defense, leaping high, showing great courage, taking intercept marks, nullifying the opposition, but he's also been used as a threat up forward and that just helps his draft stocks. He's got that versatility. He probably doesn't project as a gun key forward at this current stage of time, but when you've got a defender who can swing forward like that and impact games when they're needed, that is only gonna help his draft ranking. He's also been trialed as a defensive midfielder. So that rate of progression, that improvement at the end of the year, and of course a very strong draft combine, which I'll mention in a minute as well, has ultimately led to him shooting into the top 10 of this year's draft. Now, put a pin on where he could go because when you look at rankings, some have him top 10. I've seen one rank him, have him in the top three, but it's really going to come down to need and which teams in that top 10 have taken a liking to Toru and could leap on him early. That was an unintentional pun, but it does apply well here to Toru because he recorded the best running vertical jump result of 94 centimeters at the draft combine. He also ran three flat in 20 meter sprint, which is impressive for a big man. And I think three seconds is kind of considered elite, especially when you're six foot four. And his endurance is really good running a 636 in the 2km time trial. So his overall strength would be his aerial ability, absolutely. His courage as well, when you pair aerial ability and athleticism with the dare to go for these pack marks as well, it just makes them so much stronger a prospect. He's got really strong competitiveness. He reads the play really well. He's got resilience as well. When you factor in the fact that he's had to overcome persistent injuries and still made his way back into draft calculations and is now considered a top prospect, you definitely have to give him some credit for that. And then of course, his versatility. If you had to highlight a couple of weaknesses that he's been picked up for his decision-making and also his durability. So like I said, injury hampered in 2023, injury hampered in the early stages of 2024 and now as I understand it has picked up a back stress fracture at the end of the combine which will delay the start to his preseason so I suppose there's always got to be a risk assessment on these prospects if they've got a history of injury issues sometimes though getting into a professional environment with the correct preparation could mitigate this so who do you compare him to as a player well I've seen comparisons to Tom Stewart James Sicily, his athleticism has been compared to Nat Nui. This is all very glowing endorsement. I would also probably throw Jeremy McGovern into this as well. He's a little shorter than McGovern, but you do allow for the fact that uh, he can probably make up those two centimeters and he's, as he's gonna grow, he's only 18. But an ability to read the play better than anyone else, leap high, take a contested grab, that should not be a skill that is underrated, particularly in the back line. Tom Stewart and James Sicily are also great examples of slightly undersized players that can play above their height and have become great defenders. And James Sicily, it's an All-Australian centre half back and he's like 187 centimetres. So predicting where Tori is going to go in this draft, it's very open-ended and I've done some reading and he's been interviewed by 17 out of the 18 clubs, which is fascinating. So that means, you know, uh, look at someone like a Hawthorne who entered the draft at 33 and Collingwood at 55, that both of these teams don't have a hope in hell of getting Alex Toru, but are they considering trade-ins? I suppose in Hawthorne's case, that is distinctly possible. But what will probably dictate as much as anything where Toru goes in that top 10 is which team needs a tall intercepting defender. Now he has been linked quite heavily to North Melbourne with pick two. Reportedly the Roos are all over him and are probably exploring 
the possibility of trading pick two down to get Toru. But I suppose at this rate, there is always the risk that if they trade two down to six, he might not even be there. But the teams that need a key back, I still think North Melbourne could look to bolster that part of the ground. They've been highlighted as a team that need a key forward, and that is true. But I think a key back, particularly a high talented one with upside that is probably going to be different to the ones they have in Toru, makes sense. Richmond is still kind of a blank canvas. Could they use a key back? Melbourne at pick five. I mean, May and Lever are not young men anymore. St Kilda also have two selections, and you think teams with two selections could look to diversify their draft options here. So I'd say they're a contender. And then past that group of teams with multiple selections, there's West Coast, who probably do need a tall defender. I would probably say his range at this stage could be anywhere from 2 to 12. And I think if North Melbourne are dead set on Toru, which I'm not saying they should be, but if they hypothetically are, they might actually need pick 2 to retain him. Or they can trade down to 6 with Richmond and hope that Melbourne don't take him, which I don't know if that's going to happen, but you'd have to consider it a possibility. So he seems like a dead certainty to go in the top 10, in my opinion. But let me know in the comments, what do you think of Toru? If you go for any of those clubs, do you think you could see your team drafting him early in this year's draft? As always, I hope you got something out of this video. Let me know in the comments any plays you want to see me do next. I'm usually going to try and stay a few days ahead of the curve and make them in advance, but I'll absolutely take your suggestions on board. For now, I thank you for watching. I thank you for being subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.